Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Al Soto here. I am so excited to be with you on this Wednesday afternoon. And I promised you that we are doing a series of videos that's going into our um, new season of life together as we enter into the fall months, a new series. We have just kicked off the Spirit Formed Life. And I want to encourage you, please, 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 if you haven't done this already, get on our webpage and order Jack Hayford's book, Pastor Jack's book, The Spirit Form Life. This is going to be the book on how we're going to on-ramp people moving forward, getting them ground in their faith. We love it because it is about the Spirit Form Life. Um, and uh, then this week, we got our first section of our study guide. And so let me talk about the study guide this week that's going to be available to you so that you know, hey, I got a little information. First, you got a welcome letter from myself. I'm really, really excited about that. It just kind of is saying, welcome to the adventure, the journey of becoming more like Jesus, becoming a discipler who reproduces the life of Jesus into other people. Can't beat that. Then the second uh, part is we got some notes to leaders that kind of talks about, um, hey, these are different ways you can facilitate. We also have a section on SOAP. We are introducing the SOAP method of Bible study. So every week in these videos, and I will place these notes on the video section that's in the study guide in the comment section. And please, please, please give me some feedback. Tell me what you think There's in the comment section. But we're going to have the notes there as well. And so we will give you a verse every week that you'll come prepared to your study group uh, with, with the soap, and you're going to soap it out. Now, Pastor Doug Talks and I later are going to be doing a soap training, and we'll offer some tools and different ways that you can connect with God. Um, but we want to introduce you now because it's a very simple method that you can begin to get into the Word during the week, and uh, we are really excited about that. Really, really, really thrilled. Then on top of that, you're getting the notes that will be in the study guide. Uh, that will have the notes for this video that will be embedded. And then the study guide itself that has questions refers back to the message and to the book to give you some resources as we get to further our study together. So we are just absolutely thrilled that you said I do to Jesus and that you're taking the time to, to do this. Now, by the way, there's an added uh, resource that I've given you, and I do want to talk about it. Pastor Jack Hayford wrote a book, or wrote, excuse me, an article. It's one of his greatest teachings uh, when it came to the Holy Spirit. And it, and it talks about uh, the Holy Spirit being the great psychiatrist. I want to encourage you to take the time to uh, really read that section, uh, that little article. It's not long. It's very short. But I think it will be an encouragement to you. Uh, as you just get to dive in and talk about how the Holy Spirit deals with our emotions. Um, it's really powerful, and it's really, really awesome, and I think it's going to be a pretty amazing study. So today's video, kicking off this week, you're probably watching this. You could be in your women's Bible study. You could be in your men's group study. Whoever you're studying, maybe your ministry team is, is taking the time we're hoping to go through this material, or you're doing it one-on-one, -on -one, or you could be new on your journey and you're, you're doing this. It doesn't matter. This is for everybody. So um, today I want to talk about God in stereo, a God who's at work in us. Now, I want to say this real quickly because some of you ladies, you probably have already heard this before. Some of it's going to be reviewed, but please bear with me. God is Trinity. Now, we don't believe in three separate gods. We believe he's three in one. One God, three personalities. Uh, we don't believe it. We're not modalists that says there are three different distinct personalities from each other that are separate from each other. That'd be three gods, and that's polytheism. So, so we believe in one God, three personalities. Now, have you ever thought or asked the question, how, how, what does it mean to me in my discipleship and in my journey that God reveals himself as Trinity? How does that impact my daily life? Well, well, you know, it's really, really important that we capture that the scripture shows from the beginning to the end, there's this revelation of God and how he reveals himself. And I want to answer that question to you. First John 5, 7 through 8 in the New King James Version says this, 
uh, God is Trinity. He says, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. Now, you know, what does it mean? Here's the power of it. Think about it. We are created in the image of God. Theologians call that a mago day. We're image bearers. Now, the church has tried to debate this. There's people called dichotomists. You don't need to get hung up on this, but they say that people are just uh, uh, really body and soul. They don't have a spirit on their own. Trichotomists say because God reveals himself in Trinity, we are body, soul, and spirit. Body is the place that is our physical body. The soul is the suke, the seat of our will and our personality, our nefesh. That's, it, it's our soul that is eternal. And then the spirit, and I believe it is the spirit that God deposits in us that is able to connect with him that gives a dynamism uh, as God begins to change us. So we are trichotomists. We believe we are image bearers in, in God's image. And there's a mystery in all of this. Do Al, can you explain specifically the Trinity and what it means? Well, not really in the sense that um, listen, if there's mystery behind this. It's like the hypostasis. Oh, what was that, Al? Well, the hypostasis where theologians are trying to define the 100% humanity and deity of Jesus that are found in one that's called the hypostatic union. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's a mystery. I just know that Jesus is the God-man, came to earth so that we could be redeemed. That was the power of the incarnation. But God does reveal himself this way. So, how does this transform the way we do life? Well, I want you to think about this. Um, a guy named a Damascus Monk years ago. Let me go back up a little bit. Sixth century. He's pondering the Trinity. He Now, you know how many of us in the Western worldview, we have this triangle and we showed the Trinity as a hierarchy. There is no hierarchy in the Trinity. He said, listen, there's perfect unity, perfect harm, perfect community. No one's vying for authority, that it's, it's perfect wholeness in the Godhead. And so we're invited into the relationship with the Trinity in that. And he coined the phrase, the perichoresis, or the circle dance. Later, Rublev um, painted a picture called the circle dance. And I have that in the study guide, the, the painting, where it shows the Trinity dancing with one another. Now, this is what I like to tell people. I get invited every day with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God who reveals me to me to me in Trinity, in stereo, like a boombox, right? It's a, it's a stereo quality effect that God is revealing himself, and I get to do my dance with him. But I not only get to do my dance with him, think about this. I get to invite others to dance with him, and that's part of the discipleship process. Everything flows out of relationship. Relationship in the Trinity that's intimate. He calls us to be a part of that intimate relationship as we enter into salvation and that journey of becoming more like him. And we get to invite other people to the dance. They get to dance with him. It's powerful. Now, let me read you this passage of scripture that I think is really important as well. It's out of John chapter 1, 35 through 42. Again the next day, John stood with his two disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, um, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, it's translated teacher, where, uh, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. One of the two heard John speak and followed him. It was, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah, and you shall be called Cephas, which is translated the, the stone. One day, Peter is fishing fish. He meets Jesus and Jesus says, I'm going to give you a name change. And your name's going to be Cephas. Now, prophetically, what was that going to be? Even with all the mess up in the 
fa failures that Peter was going to do. And boy, did he do that. And I like Peter because of it. Just as Pastor Jack says in his chapter on the pillar principle, we all identify with Peter. But here's the powerful thing of it. The powerful thing is, I see you, Peter, not where you're at today, but one of these days you're going to be the rock that I'm going to build this church on. That's the powerful thing. And that's what we were talking about last week. God gives us a new name. Ab Abram get, enters into the promise of the Lord. What happened? He becomes Abraham. God is all about changing our name. And for some of us, we have failure. We have all kinds of labels. And in the study guide, I'm going to ask you to identify some of those things. And then I'm going to ask you, what is God saying to you as your new name? What are the strengths that God has given you? What are the gifts that God has given you that is your new name to walk out? Isn't that powerful? Now, let's talk about two definitions that are really, really important. And these two definitions, and I, you got to forgive me here, I'm, I've got my script that I'm trying to follow out and uh, work with you, and I just kind of messed up my pages. Here they are. So in my script, there's two definitions that I think is really, really important. I want to define for you uh, what it means to be, you know, be on this spirit-filled journey. What does it mean to walk this thing out and to live a spirit-filled life. And again, please forgive me. Uh, I did this on my phone, and you'll be happy to know that my phone has all the memory used out on it, and it is toast. It is toast. But uh, thank God that I can do this from my computer. Hold on a second. Are you there? And so um, when we talk about that kind of arm, let's go back to the Trinity in terms of the definition that I gave you. I gave you a definition of the Trinity, and then I gave you, uh, I'm going to give you these definitions today that were in the sermon outline because I asked you an important question. What does it mean? What does it mean to be Trinitarian? And oftentimes within Christian circles, we make Christianity this glorified self help. And part of being a glorified self help. We just kind of go, if I just pick myself up by the bootstraps, all I need to do is work harder. And it's none of that. None of that. It's not about human effort. Matter of fact, grace is not about human effort. But the spirit form life is, it is, is this is a supernatural work. Matter of fact, Dallas Willard says, it is the supernatural work of the spirit that transforms us in a way that we become more like Jesus because we didn't come in the first place on our own volition. It was the Holy Spirit that drew us. So if you're new on your journey and, you've, and the enemy's been in any way trying to cause confusion for you, let me tell you something. He, he brought you. He chose you. It was the Spirit that draws us to himself. So being Spirit-filled literally means this. Being spirit-filled is centered upon the continual process of spiritual growth and maturity that can only be found and cultivated by the Spirit of God. This is a daily submission as we walk with the Lord being filled with His glory. See, we're not going to make the third person invisible. The Holy Spirit is already at work in you. And in this moment when you're hearing this video, He's already doing what He can only do. Then here's the second thing. Define a spirit-formed disciple. A spirit-empowered disciple is a lifelong follower of Jesus. Or now I would put learner. We're all learning. The Holy Spirit is one who forms us from the inside out in the context of community. Can't do it on your own. Got to be in community. Got to be in the life of community, the church. He, the Holy Spirit, forms the character of Christ in believers' lives. That's the fruit of the Spirit. We just got through that series. And helps disciples reproduce themselves by leading others in the same character formation process. This is all accomplished in the context of communal relationships. Again, community. And it is the believer who exercises one's will to be submitted or surrendered to the authority and the work of Christ in their lives. Those definitions, again, will be in the study guide as well as in the, in the section below this video. Here's your soap passage for this week. Your soap passage will be Colossians 1, uh, chapter 3, excuse me, uh, 1 and verse 1 and 12. And what I'm going to ask that you do is soap that. Just, just what's my observations? What's the application that the Holy Spirit is saying to me? We're not asking you to write a treatise. What is it that is? And your prayer. 
After your application, you go, you write your prayer to the Lord with that, and then bring it to your small group next week, and you, and then your uh, instructor, your facilitator can then help you uh, share those things. Listen, there are three steps that we're going to walk into as we walk into our new identity, and I'm not going to cover that in this video as much as to say we got to come to know Jesus, and after we come to know Jesus, we surrender to that work of the Spirit as 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 He's working in our lives. And then here's the last thing. The last thing he sees shaping our identity for destiny. We are created for destiny. There is a destiny and the fingerprint of God in each one of us that is shaping us, not where we're at today, but in a place and a course that God is going to use us along the way. And by the way, we'll never arrive because we will not come to the place of that kind of perfection until we see God face to face. And even then, I believe all eternity, we're going to learn more and more about who God is. But in the process, it is so important as disciples that we stay engaged because we don't keep it to ourselves. Oh, no, no, no. We want to be reproducing disciples that are giving life to other people. That's going to be the end of our video today. This is a blessing to be with you. You're going to have your questions. Uh, I think our women, is this is their first time they're going to be listening to it. And Linda, you're, it was a great teacher, is going to be facilitating that discussion. I've got a men's group. Wherever you're at on this, this is the first video. And, we're, and again, welcome to the adventure. Welcome. Welcome that we all get to be on this journey together as we get to become more like Jesus. God bless you. And man, let, let, let's kind of share what God is doing in our groups as we get to learn this together. Hey, remember this. You are, you are God's masterpiece. God bless you.